So in lesson 12, we're going to be focused on split plot designs. In this first lesson, we're going to introduce split plot designs, when we use them, some of the terminology, how the random how the randomization or what randomization is involved. And then we're gonna have some examples to help us put this into our mind. So split plot designs are needed when the levels of some treatment are more difficult to change than those of others. And this is the key point, that's why I wrote it out, is that in a split plot design, we have a factor that is going to be hard to change. Um, this design is similar to a nested block, but in a block design, the experimental units are nested within the blocks. There is a separate random assignment of the units to the treatment, which is made in each block. So in this case, there's a block, and inside we apply our treatments one through T, and then we would have another block and we'd assign treatments one through T. In a split plot design, we actually have two experimental units. One experimental unit is going to be the subplot, and then the other experimental unit is going to be the whole plot. So the subplots are going to be nested within the whole plots, and the whole plots may or may not be nested within the block. Let's get an example um, that we've seen before. So in lesson one, we had this example, which I believe was called number eight, and I was trying to foreshadow the split plot. So let's use this example that we've already seen to connect what I was talking about up here. So the example says, in studying four irrigation and two fertilizing methods, 24 fields are selected for this study. It's much harder to change the irrigation method. So fields are assigned to an irrigation method in a block of six fields at a time, while the fertilizers are assigned to each field individually. The field um, yield is measured. In lesson one, we are focused on what are our EUs and our OUs. So in this case, what we have is our irrigation method is hard to change. So what we did was we had these six blocks or these six fields, and we applied irrigation method one to all of them. Then we apply irrigation method two to all these six. This, when we're applying our irrigation, this, would be called our whole plot. And we would have four whole plots. And then within our whole plot, we're going to assign a fertilizer. So in this case, our experimental two units are the blocks of six fields. So this block is six field, this block is six field, this block, and so on, that are receiving the irrigation treatment and our other experimental unit are the 24 individual fields that are receiving the fertilizer. So the subplots are the individual field and the whole plots are a specific block. Okay, now let's talk a little bit more about how we randomize this example. for a split plot design. For split plot randomization, we need to randomize at both levels. So we have a hierarchy of factors where we have the whole plot, which again is the hard to change factor. And then we have a subplot factor, which are nested in the whole plot. Typically, um, we have the whole plot, which are randomly assigned we have our whole plot treatment factors, which are going to be randomly assigned to our whole plots. And then within each whole plot, we have treatment factors that are randomly assigned to the subplots. Okay, so in a subplot design, we are inducing a restricted randomization scheme. And what I mean by that, we're restricting our randomization is because we first randomize our whole plot and then we randomize our subplots. A unrestricted randomization would look like a CRD, 
with a factorial design. And we will be going into what I'm talking about in a moment. But when we have this restricted randomization, it's gonna cause the effect of the whole plot treatments to be less precise compared to those treatments in the subplot level. So we are losing a little bit of accuracy, but being practical farmers, because our example we're gonna be talking about isn't um, talking about farms, it's needed. So let's get into another example where we'll talk about different ways to randomize in context of our agricultural experiment that we're gonna carry through for the rest of this lesson. So the goal of our agricultural experiment is to compare the yield of three varieties of soybeans under two types of fertilizers. Now, in this case, we have fixed, we're only looking at three um, soybeans and two fertilizers. We could have done a random, this could have been a random effect, but let's just stick with a fixed effect approach. Okay, the available resources are 18 equally sized plots. Our treatment factors are the variety and the fields. Um, the experimental units are the 18 plots, or at least one of them, okay? And for a bounce design, we're gonna have three EUs per factor combination. And so a question we wanna be asking ourselves is what would be the best way to do the randomization scheme? The first approach we might wanna take is something that we've talked about before, which is a factorial treatment design under a CRD. And so in this case, we would take our six combinations. Why do we have six? Because we have three levels of soybean variety and two of fertilizer. And we would randomly apply those to all of our 18 fields. Notice that we have F2, V2 here, F2, V2 here, and F2, V2 here. So each treatment combination will appear three times. Now, this is a great design, but what if our farmer came back to us and told us that it's hard to change fertilizers at each plot? So in this plot right here, let's say maybe these three parts of land are really close together and it's hard logistically for the farmer to change the fertilizers. Maybe, so we need to account for that. Also, thinking about good design of experiment protocol, what if it rains and some of the fertilizer in this plot drains off into this plot? Then we could be getting contamination. And so we need to think of another approach or maybe a better approach that will help us in figuring this out. So a better error control design for this specific example with our farmer and everything he's told us would be to maybe do a split plot randomization. How do we do this? So what would happen is we would have a whole plot and we would apply fertilizer one to this whole plot. Then we would apply fertilizer two to this whole plot, fertilizer two to this one, 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 and two. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six whole plots, which we randomly assign either F1 or F2 so that we can stay in a balanced design. Each fertilizer is seen in the whole plots three times, okay? Now within this whole plot, we are now going to assign variety one, two, or three of the soybean. And you see it again here in the whole plots. So what we do is we have our whole plots, which we randomly assign the fertilizer, which is the hard to change factor. Then within each whole plot, we're going to randomly assign and plant the three varieties of soybeans. These are called our subplots, okay? We can also extend this idea to include blocks. So maybe our farmer is really rich and he has land in London and Virginia Beach and some other place that I can't think of, maybe Florida. 
And so we want to block by where his farms are. So maybe this is block one and this is going to be farm one. Here would be farm two and here would be farm three. And we're going to block because we know that these three farms have different a potential for different sources of variability in our design. Notice that each block is going to have a complete set of whole plots. What I mean by that is that we see each treatment combination once. And so our farms or our blocks are also acting as our replicates. In our class slash the rest of these lectures, we're going to be focused on a split plot design with blocks. With that, our next lesson is going to be focused on the ANOVA and the statistical model and estimating variance components. The lesson after that will be looking specifically at this agricultural experiment.